Everybody good? So uh, the word says in John 8, 34, what time is it? Okay. Uh, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, everyone who practices sin habitually is a slave to sin. And then it says here, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son. See, we're not slaves. We, we are sons and daughters. That's why we don't have to live in bondage. We don't have to live in slavery. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And I like to add that it's the revelation of the word that sets you free. And so um, and then if you read through the book of Romans, it's really good about the flesh. And, and why am I emphasizing so much about the flesh? It's because that's the open door. The open door is sin. The open door is unforgiveness. The open door is bitterness, unbelief. The open door is where you're choosing not to submit and surrender. Like, Lord, all right, right now I'm struggling. I might be in unbelief about something, but, Lord, help me. Help my unbelief. I submit to you. I'm asking you to help me with this. See, see, that's the mercy of God. That's the beauty of him. And so the scripture here says, uh, do you not know, this is in Romans 6, 16 it says do you not know that when you continually offer yourself to someone to do his will you are the slaves of whom you obey just that's nauseating to me that i am submitting to something constantly over and over again a type of sin and i'm really submitting to satan i'm not submitting to him it says either slaves of sin which leads to death or of obedience which leads to righteousness right standing with god and here's the thing that i've learned through freedom that's come in my life if god requires it if he says this is what we're to do he will give us the ability to do it yeah. i have said no to things that i thought i could never say i lost my desire to get high i never got high ever 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 again i never had a desire for it never went back to it that's jesus that's jesus i never had a desire but but i really believe it came through the, you know, Jesus is the word through the meditation of the word. I do. I, I believe it. And um, so anyway, listen to this scripture in Jeremiah. This one really got me. Jeremiah in a message. It says here, get smart. Sounds like a movie or show. Get smart. Your leaders are handing you a pack of lies and you're swallowing them. Use your heads. Do you think you can rob and murder and have sex with the neighborhood wives? Tell lies nonstop. Worship the local gods and buy every novel religious commodity on the market. And then march into this temple set apart from my worship and say we're safe. <laughs> thinking that the place itself gives you a license to go on with all this outrageous sacrilege a cave full of criminals do you think you can turn this temple set apart from my worship into something like that well think again i got eyes in my head and i can see what's going on god's decree wow and that's the thing we cannot straddle the fence and and so here's here's what i get from people well that's religious no, the Bible says you're either hot or you're cold. If you're lukewarm, we cannot have it, have it your way, and, and you know, like have your drive-through ministry. That's not the way it is. The way it is is we submit and we surrender to the Lord. We get before the Lord. We pray. We tarry before the Lord. That's what I was taught. You know, I would love it. Like give me a three-minute word and give me a three-minute prayer so I can get this thing over with. Well, I would love that. You know, just go for it. Let me get the heck out of here and have this thing shifted in my life. Well, that's not the way God designed us is to wait on him. The privilege is to be in relationship. The privilege is to, to worship him. The privilege is to hear his voice and then see transformation, which is awesome. But, you know, and, but where I, like when I first got saved, and again, and, and listen, the woman who mentored me was an ex-madam. She was in prison eight years she came out and and god set her free i mean her clients were people from washington dc senators and, and congressmen how unusual and so but god you know god god set her free you know he did a work in her life but she was tough she was no nonsense and that was the thing that I, you know i i'm not suggesting mean or or you know just dishonor i i never would but we've gotten away. Everything is like, I don't want you to be hurt. I don't want your feelings to be hurt. That has kept us in bondage. That has enabled us. We had to learn how to pray, fast, 
get on our faces before the Lord, we would corporately get together, and, and she was just really hard, you know? And I thought half the time I was, I really was, I was offended with her like every other day because I thought, who is she talking to? She's so bossy, you know? And I didn't like it, but, but thank God. Thank God, because she was powerful, right? I mean, my sisters knew her. Powerful woman. And I thought she would preach on top of a car on 44th and Broadway and prophesy to people in New York City. She had a permit to do that. And she would, I mean, call people out and sin. We, we saw miracles. And, and I had the privilege of going to prisons with her for a couple of years to preach and to see tr lives right before our eyes transformed, right before our eyes. That's the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't water it down anymore. And it's not about convenience anymore. It's about, I, I'm telling you, this is the word of the Lord. And I, I, I know the Lord has been saying, and I've been saying this for a while, prepare yourselves. Consecrate yourselves before the Lord. Know how to hear his voice. Understand the word of God. Decree that they know that, the, you know, in, in Genesis 1, it says that he has given us his, his creation. We were called to subdue, overthrow, take dominion, to, to, to rule in, in our sphere. Now, again, I'm not saying that you're going to be all crazy out there and rule and, you know, but in our sphere of influence, we have that authority. But I'm going to tell you something. I do believe that God is raising us up to where there's such a clarity and a purity in what our decrees are and our prayers to shift things in the nation. Because read the end of the book. And, and so, but we have that authority. It's not just about, oh, we're just going to go to church and we get a goosebump here today. No. No, the, the, the apostles turned the world upside down. And in Matthew 8, it says that they, the, the, the charge was, Jesus said, when you see the people say the kingdom of God is at hand, to what? Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, cast out devils, and raise the dead. That's the mandate for every single born-again Christian. We are all called to do that, every single one of us. And it's a privilege. And I thank God that people had that tenacity to pray over me and to believe God for me to get set free, to believe God for me to walk in a place of healing and deliverance because I was a mess. But that's the power of the gospel. And so um, I think that, that you know, just this, this whole thing of meditating on the word is just so key. There's healings. Like, for example, a lot of people that have illnesses, and I'm going to close with this and we're going to pray, um, you know, are demons. Not everybody who is sick has a demon, but a lot of people who are sick have demons. And in Luke chapter 13, and again, it's not a big deal. Cast it out. Take authority over it. Come out of agreement with it. Luke 13, 11 through 13, the Amplified says, and there was a woman who for 18 years had an illness, illness caused by a spirit, caused by a demon. She was bent double and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called over to her and said, Woman, you are released from your illness. And then he laid hands on her, and immediately she stood up, erect again, and began glorifying and praising God. See, when you've been set free from something, you're going to rejoice, and you're going to worship, and not really give a care about what you think, about how I'm going to worship, because once I was bound, and now I'm free, and the Lord has set my mind free. There have been people who are, I remember reading one time, and I have seen this, uh, of how God has set people's minds free, but what gave me that that impetus to, to really believe for this is I remember reading a book by Kenneth Hagin. I forget which book it was in, but uh, there was a woman who was in a mental institution for many years, and it was his neighbor's sister, and she believed she committed the unpardonable sin. She just really aligned herself with the lie and believed it, and she was in an institution for years. And so Kenneth Hagin and his wife, the, the sister, they were a little afraid to have her come home because when she came home, she was extremely unstable, and it was very frightening for them to be with her. And they prayed for hours. Now, I don't know if it was all in one sitting, in tongues. You know, it's funny because the things that, that gives us the most powers, the things that people fight most against, right. worship, right. tongues, the power of the blood and the word and prayer. And um, they prayed in tongues forever. For, I think he said it was about six hours, and I don't think it was straight, but whatever, six hours. They said when she came... That spirit in her manifested. They looked at her. Now, she's had prayer. She had prayer many, 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 many times. But it was them praying in the spirit. 
that this thing, it, it just empowered them in such a way that instantaneously she was delivered and, and, and never went back to that institution again. See, when you, when you, that's why testimonies are so important. When you hear about it, it's like, oh, wait a minute, I can do that too. I know that I can believe for that too. When you hear about uh, Debbie back there who, who got her, her inheritance where she didn't have an inheritance and now Debbie Tag has a, uh, a condominium, wow, she didn't have an inheritance, but now I can have an inheritance. By the way, I shared the testimony in Texas. Now, uh, see, but that, that was how God set her free. And it was faith, and it was, a, it was progressive. But God turned it around. See, with God, nothing shall be called impossible. Oh, wait a minute. So-and-so got delivered from a spirit that kept him in poverty. And now God is breaking through in the financial realm. But, but God also wants a spirit, soul, and body to be delivered. Oh, man, then I can believe that. Oh, so-and-so got healed. And they had a spirit on him around. Else they just had a miraculous healing. Well, I can believe for that healing. I had battled with fear and depression and suicidal thoughts all the time, but I got set free. Well, you can believe for that now. Yeah. You see, we, no matter what it is, no matter what it is, he said, I came to set the captives free. He died on the cross. He took the, the crown of thorns on his head because of the, for the people who are oppressed with mental issues. I saw, we were in a prayer meeting, and I saw Jesus in, come walking in, and the bottom half of him turned into a big, huge, white prayer tent. And I knew he was welcoming people in for healing. And that's what God is going to do today. You don't have to stay where you're at. You don't have to stay. Just believe the whole gospel. There's a full gospel. We can't pick and choose what we want to believe. Well, I don't like this portion. I don't like this portion. Well, I'm going to rip this page out. Why well, didn't write the book? But if you, if you believe the full gospel, that's where you get the freedom in. We, the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, the Lord is releasing back into the church a holy fear of the Lord. A holy fear, a reverential fear of the Lord. And I don't mean afraid of him. I mean an honor and a respect. There's been such dishonor and disrespect, and that has got to shift. It is not okay. And one last thing. If you've been involved in any, your families in any kind of um, cults like uh, Jehovah's Witness or um, what's some of them? Scientology, Mormonism, or any of that, you, you need to renounce it. You have to... You have to get deliverance. Freemasonry, you need to get deliverance. Secret societies, you need to get deliverance. All right? And um, so praise God. Amen.